The Great Dismal Swamp once covered nearly a million acres between northeastern North Carolina and southeastern Virginia. Between 1620 and around the time of the Civil War, it served as a thriving refuge for runaway slaves who chose to build their lives here in freedom no matter the conditions. You have uh, venomous snakes biting in insects and flies, um, thick cover of green briars. A great place as a refuge for wildlife, not as much probably a great place refuge for people. As many as 50,000 runaway slaves called maroons, an indigenous term, settled here on small rises of land known as Mesic Islands. Chris Lowy manages the Swamp's National Wildlife Refuge in Suffolk, Virginia. The amazing part about the escaped slaves living here in the swamp is that the conditions living in here were better for them than being enslaved. And that is, uh, yeah, that is a difficult concept to understand today. They established hidden communities in these heavily treed wetlands, building cabins and possibly farming small plots of land. Researchers believe the former slaves fed their families by hunting deer, wild turkey, and other game, skills they may have learned from Native Americans who also sought shelter here. The runaways went to great lengths to keep their settlements secret due to fear of being captured by slave owners. Dr. Dan Sayers, an archaeologist at American University, has studied the Maroon Islands for more than 10 years. What I'm finding out there in the middle of the swamp is these big old cabin footprints and a fire pit and all this stuff that shows, uh, you know, that this is a really active landscape. And most, not to say all, most of the material culture or artifacts um, is, is stone. And it's in, in equally abundant is burnt sand and clay. Sayers realized he was on to a significant discovery. It'd be little pieces of clear glass. It'd be a couple white clay tobacco pipe fragments, uh, some iron or metal uh, fragments or little pieces. Oh, a smattering of nails, some lead shot, a couple gun flint chips. It was enough stuff. Um, that I would artifacts. I was able to definitely feel and definitely know that this was of historic period. As a direct descendant of a slave who helped to build the Great Dismal Swamp, Eric Shepard shares a personal connection to this history. The story of the enslaved people that uh, escaped the plantations and went and lived in the swamp um, was really, uh, I guess, first uh, introduced to me. Uh, yeah. in, the, in the slave narrative of, of my ancestor, Moses Grandy, where he was employed as a, a boatsman or waterman. Grandy traveled the swamp's canal and learned to navigate boats as logging operations and trade expanded at the site. He and other slaves dug the canal in several ditches by hand. As the swamp is today, yes, slave labor, um, those people have a permanent um, mark on the swamp as it is today. After arranging to buy his freedom, Grandy dictated his story, sharing about life as a slave and working in the swamp, never mentioning his interactions with escaped slaves living deep in the swamp. He had to still uh, be mindful of when he shared his story, uh, that it was you had to protect the people. It was a certain amount of secrecy. While many made the swamp their home, others saw it as just a stop on their journey north as part of the Underground Railroad. The Dismal Swamp was a refuge. It was a, a haven for the Underground Railroad activity. But can you imagine down in Louisiana, if you get to the Dismal Swamp, you're almost home free. In 2004, the refuge was designated an important landmark on the National Underground Railroad Network to Freedom. Freedom Maroons in the swamp preferred to living in captivity. On the one hand, it tells us uh, just how horrible slavery was, right? And really, let's not forget the racism and the, and the white supremacy part of that. When slavery ended in 1863, residents were free to leave the shadows of the swamp, moving to surrounding communities, a time Shepard compares to the biblical account of Israel's deliverance from bondage. How did God deliver them out? Who can't explain it? It's only one explanation. The same God yesterday, today, and forever. Charlene Aaron, CBN News.